This is KGW News at Sunrise. We're leading off the Sunrise show this morning with this security camera footage. It shows the moment a defendant ran out of a Washington County courtroom this week. Coming up in our top story, we'll have more on his escape. The second escape from a Washington County courtroom in just the past two months. Plus, an Oregon family had their pickup truck stolen in the Dells, and they were devastated by the fact that their dog was inside. Now they're sharing their story in hopes of getting their beloved pet back. And we're also going to pay a visit to Yamhill County this morning <laughs> because of the alpacas. Yes, good morning to the two of you. I think they just acknowledged the hello. A little nod of the head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what the heck is happening there exactly at the Yamhill County Fairgrounds? I'll tell you, it's an alpaca show that's also an alpaca competition. It's not like an Olympic style competition, by the way. They're not running around. No, no, it's like a beauty contest. <laughs> it's basically a beauty contest to determine the best looking of these alpacas. Uh, we'll give you further details on this coming up a little bit later on the Sunrise Show. Those faces are filled with attitude. Don't mess with the alpacas. <laughs> hey, happy Friday, everyone. Before we get to all those stories, yeah. Rod, fill us in on the forecast. I've not said this very often. I have a, a nice day coming. See, Thank I almost you. stumbled over the verbiage <laughs> because I'm not used to saying those words together. A nice day coming. Here's a look at the Pioneer Courthouse Square camera from atop the Pioneer Park building. All is dry across our region. Generally, we are partly cloudy this morning. We're down to 42. There are some cool spots. And like yesterday morning, we're watching for some spotty 32 numbers before it's all said and done. Forest Grove, Hillsboro, you folks both got down to freezing yesterday. You could do it again this morning. Scappoose is getting down there at 35. Sandy's down to 35 as well. Salem holding at 37. Actually running cooler than you were 24 hours ago. Not in Dallas, it's 34. So it's a chilly start, but here we go. Partly cloudy skies coming. 52 at noon, and I think we have a chance to get up to 60. We'll either just make it or we'll just miss it. The weekend forecast, of course, is coming up. Yeah, we'll have that rod here in about seven minutes. But right now we do want to get to one of our top local headlines this morning. Portland police arrested a man who led multiple law enforcement agencies on a chase from Clark County to Northeast Portland. This all started after one o'clock this morning, just after one o'clock. The Clark County Sheriff's Office says they got a call about a domestic violence suspect, 55 year old Brett Chauncey on a rural property in Battleground. Chauncey left in a blue box truck before deputies got there, but they did catch up with him at Northeast Ward and 162nd. But when they tried to pull him over, he led deputies on a chase across the Glen Jackson Bridge and on to I-84 in Portland. The sheriff's office stopped chasing him when he drove through traffic cones and into an active construction zone on 84. Portland police and the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office picked up the chase from there. They used spike strips and that eventually caused Chauncey to crash his truck near Northeast 82nd in Columbia. Chauncey is now charged with eluding police in addition to several other outstanding charges. For the second time in two months, an escape from a Washington County courtroom. The latest happened Monday when a defendant ran off, then was captured, and the whole thing yeah. was caught on video. Devin Haskins is covering this story for us this morning with more on that video. So, Devin, there are some differences between these two cases. Yeah, that's correct, Drew. The man that ran from the courtroom on Monday was not in custody at the time and had far less serious charges against him. Whereas in February, a different man facing very serious charges was in custody when he ran. Both men, after their attempted escapes, were caught though. The Washington County Sheriff's Office gave us this video of what happened on Monday. You see the defendant right there, Jamie Regald, Regalado Pena, run from this Washington County courtroom during an out of custody hearing. A judge had just determined that the man was under the influence, which was a violation of his probation. So the judge ordered that the 34 year old be taken into custody. But before a deputy could get into the courtroom, Regalado Pena ran out of the courtroom and the courthouse and was stopped by a parked car that he ran into, at which point a detective took him into custody. This individual on Monday, he was not in our custody. He was on probation. He came to the court probation hearing on his own accord. Um, he was in front of the judge, and when the judge remanded him, he made a decision to run. So both of these attempts to escape the one on Monday and the one in February are now under review by officials in Washington County. Back to you. Thank you, Devin. Our next story is about a family in the Dells who had their pickup truck stolen from a Home Depot parking lot with their dog inside. KGW's Alma McCarty talked to them and has more on what happened. She's just an absolute sweetheart. So any 
person that's seen this dog would just fall in love with her. One-year-old Ida, a German short-haired pointer, means the world to Sean and Jean Corbin. She's very identifiable just knowing her coloring. I've never seen another one that looked even close to her colors. Wednesday afternoon, Ida was inside this 1991 silver Toyota pickup stolen from the Home Depot parking lot in the Dalles. Sean had gone inside briefly to talk with a friend passing by and left his keys in the truck. So we chatted for 10 or 15 minutes and I came outside and the truck was gone. We started driving around town looking for the pickup. We got word. I talked to my wife, Jane, here that uh, somebody seen the truck on I-84 westbound by Mosier. We live in a very small town. It's just, and the crime here is just getting so much worse. I, it's just, it just breaks my heart. Now the search continues in the gorge and in the Portland metro, where the couple believes the thief could have been heading. My daughter and I, we drove the entire interstate and we just haven't found her. Jean's post on Facebook, shared thousands of times so far, encourages everyone to keep an eye out for the dog and the pickup. The Dallas police confirm neither have been located at this point. It's a silver 1991 Toyota regular cab pickup with a black lumber rack on it and a blue stripe on the side. The lumber rack is very identifiable. It's just, the whole truck just got painted last year, so it looks brand new, even though it's, I bought it when I was 19 years old and have been driving it for the last 32 years. More important than getting the truck back, they say, being reunited with their dog. I want my dog. I don't care about my pickup, my tools. Just give me my damn dog. Alma McCarty, KGW News. All right, following that report from Alma, let's take another look now at some of our local headlines this morning that we're following. We start with a Coast Guard crew from Astoria who rescued three kayakers from the Elk River Wednesday night near Bay City along the Washington coast. This video shows the Coast Guard locating the, high, uh, the kayakers, lifting them to safety. We were told that one of the kayakers was showing signs of hypothermia and was taken to the hospital. But all three people were told are, are going to be okay. And they say this is in large part to the fact that one of their relatives managed to call 911 quickly. All right, Powell's Books in downtown Portland along Birdside, about to get a new tasty neighbor. Shake Shack <laughs> is opening its first location in the city of Portland 10 days from now on April 24th. This is uh, Shake Shack's second location in Oregon. The first one is out in Beaverton. And last headline here for skiers and snowboarders, the Hoodoo Ski Area in Sisters is offering free lift tickets today. That word again is free. Uh, all you have to do to get those free passes is donate four more non-perishable food items that will benefit the Central Oregon Food Bank. Those lifts are open, by the way, today from 9 to 4. And that's a look at some of this morning's local headlines. That video is awesome. All the snow with the deep blue sky. Yeah. And uh, just a small correction. Uh, I understand Shake Shack has said they will not open until we hit 60 <laughs> degrees. So hopefully that will come, what we at, 10 days you said? To yep. hit 60? April 24th. The, uh, you know, there are certain stories that catch Rod's attention. You can tell when that happens. He's out here in the studio and suddenly when I said the word Shake Shack, he Shake was like, Shack. Hmm. I'm listening now with great intent to the yes. news program. I've not been. I've heard people speak highly. I love the name. Shake, Shake Shack. Shack. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Uh, good day today. Good day tomorrow. And good. then we have the rainy Sunday. Oh, well. Here we go with the satellite picture. Let's get into the good stuff, shall we? Here's the front, by the way, that we're tracking for Sunday. And this will get us right back into the same weather pattern we've been in. That means behind it, we have chilly days coming up next week where highs will do well to be 53, 54 degrees. Snow levels at times will be 1,500 to 2,000 feet. So that's the air coming behind that front. Now, until that front gets here, we're going to have a little bit of a warm up and some dry weather. I just checked the final uh, climate report for yesterday for PDX. Did in fact have a zero for precipitation. The showers yesterday tended to fizzle over the coast range. So yesterday was the first time this month that we have not had at least a trace of moisture. Anyway, no issues for you today. Cascade passes are in good shape. We're partly cloudy across the entire region. Temps are chilly this morning. Freezing in Bend, John Day Burns, and Baker City. Now just above freezing in Kelso. So like yesterday here on the west side, we'll see at least some spotty uh, 32 degree numbers. Future cast, partly cloudy to maybe a mostly sunny day. Here we are at 5 p.m. Now tomorrow, a lot of clouds. It could be a mostly cloudy day, but we should stay dry. There is the threat 
we being Portland, Salem, Vancouver. There is the threat tomorrow afternoon that there would be some showers along the coast. Futurecast doesn't really show it, but that could happen. Here comes the wave of moisture now. This is Sunday morning at 8 a.m. raining at the coast during the a.m. hours. Here comes a band of moisture for a rainy Sunday overall and the seven day forecast. Yesterday was 56. We will be warmer today. We might just get to 60. 60, 62 tomorrow, even if we have a lot of clouds, I think. And then the rainy Sunday and the showers after that. But these two days look pretty nice. That's your forecast. You know what else Tuesday is, Rod? That Tuesday you're covering up there. Tuesday is also tax day. Yes, tax day. Sorry to bring it up. <laughs> but since it is fast approaching, we thought we should cover tax day for you. Some reminders during these final few days of tax season coming up in just a moment. And if you know about a story that we should tell or a person we should profile, let us know. Text or call us at the number on your screen, 503-226-5088. Welcome back to the Sunrise Show. We have tax day coming up on Tuesday. So let's take a look at some of the local taxes that some of you are required to pay this year. We're going to start with Portland's $35 arts tax. So this is tax applies to all adults living in Portland who made more than $1,000 last year. You can pay that tax online at portland.gov. All right, let's widen things out a little bit to Multnomah County and the preschool for all tax. This one applies to people that make more than $125,000 a year or couples who make more than 200,000. And if you live anywhere in the metro area, don't forget about the homeless services tax, which applies to that same income bracket. You might remember those last two caught a lot of people off guard. Neither metro or the county notified taxpayers how, where, or how much they would have to pay. Penalties were waived after public backlash and a KGW investigation. So this year, reminders were sent in the mail. All of these taxes, by the way, administered by the city of Portland. So whether you qualify for one or you qualify for all of them, you will have to pay. I mean, there are a lot of different ways to file your taxes, but the feds have one that's free and a lot of people just don't know about it. Let's take a look. It's called IRS free file. I can tell you a little bit about how that works. Go to irs.gov, search for free file, and it'll recommend 11 tax preparation partners that you can use to file your return. 
It's generally for people who make $73,000 a year or less, and you may still get charged for filing state taxes. So be sure to check because each partner has different requirements. According to the National Taxpayer Advocate, about 70% of taxpayers are eligible for this free service, but only 2% used it last year. I chose Tax Act and I did the process very easy, very similar to TurboTax, but it was 100% free this time. If it still feels daunting though, there are alternatives. There are trained volunteers around the country who can help qualifying taxpayers file in person for free. You can find more information about those programs if you go to irs.gov. Just search Volunteer Income Tax Assistance or Tax Counseling for the Elderly. Rod Hill is playing the role of hero this morning after three minutes of talking about taxes, Rod. Yeah. You get to talk about the yeah. weather. Yeah, and it's going to be <laughs> nice today. Hey, uh, partly to perhaps mostly sunny at times, no rain chance, light winds, and at least the chance that a lot of us get up right around 60 for a high. Here's a look at where we are right now. Now, this morning it's chilly like it was 24 hours ago. We've got temps, Scappoose, Hillsboro, Forest Grove, all dropping down near 32, may make it. By, by the time the sun pops up this morning, Salem, you're running a little bit cooler than 24 hours ago. Right now at 37, Dallas, Lebanon, Estacada, all nearing 32 degrees. Here comes Clyde. Rub my tummy. That's what that picture looks like to me. <laughs> Use that hashtag KGW Dog of the Day. You post your pick on your social media channels. Hopefully we'll find it and put it on our show. The weather map is dry today. Kind of partly to mostly sunny skies expected. This model at 4 p.m. gives you folks out in the Dow 60 degrees. I think we will see at least a few 60s between Kelso and Eugene, maybe Portland and Salem. 50s at the coast and then 50s in Central Oregon. Been today 53 and around 50 out to the east. The seven day, a lot of cloud cover tomorrow, but we should stay dry here inland. There could be a few afternoon rain showers pop along the coast. Portland, even with cloud cover, I think we have a chance to be 60, 62. Sunday, this looks like a wet day. It might be dry early inland. Uh, our Futurecast models show it's raining right from the start at the beach. And then we've got cool, showery weather to follow into next week. And that's your forecast.